Hi all and welcome to this part 4 of renovating a TVR. Um, as you know we're on the front suspension. Um, if you haven't seen part 3 go back, in fact there's the whole lot on there um, in a playlist if you look on the TVR. Uh, this part 4 I'm starting to address the front Brembo 4 pot calipers and uh, larger discs that I'm fitting. The Focus ST170 300mm discs grooved and drilled um, and the Brembo 4 pot aluminium calipers they're actually off a 7 series BMW E38 model um, and I'd, I've maybe said before I don't know but I, I'll probably say it many times through this video uh, that the only kits I know of that you can buy. Sorry, let's start again. Using the E38 BMW big four pot massive calipers, these great big things, um, is not that hard to do, but the um, carrier for the caliper on the TVR which I'm assuming is a Ford Sierra or something. The centres on the lugs on the castings on the hub are big enough because these are much further apart. So I've got to make some adapters. And I think this is where some, some people have fallen over is that if you make adapters and you just bolt them on to the original place and then bolt the caliper on, it necessitates the fact that then you have to put a 12 millimeter wheel spacer on or thereabouts because uh, the carrier doesn't fit properly. My idea is to try and keep it within the confines of the original. That's what I'm going to try and do. Now I, I don't know if this is possible. I'm going to attempt it and let's see where we get. Uh, it might be quite a lengthy video um, but we'll see. Well, let's just see how far I get. Um, if it gets to be too long, I'll chop it and do a second part of that. So, without further ado, we're on right-hand side front suspension at the moment. The car's up in the air on the lift. And let's see what happens. Okay, I've already been told by a friend, and I, I never thought. Uh, I'm making um, a template. Well, it's not. It's actually the, the new adapter from steel. But it's so hard working with steel that he come up and said look why don't you make it out of wood it's just a template and then once you've got you happy with it your template's right you can carry on then and make a copy of that in steel which i thought was a good idea i might adapt it yet i don't know but i'm going to make a start with steel see where we get okay so the bolts will come in from the back a bit finicky and bolt this block of steel that's going up here because these are bigger discs so the caliper can't go right back and even if it could it wouldn't matter because the centres of this are 90 millimetre and the centres of my other caliper are I believe 130 but we'll check I reckon, I reckon that um, the centres on these Brembo calipers are about 113 millimetres they don't line up so I'm going to bob this caliper on so you can see the dilemma. So that's on, the disc pads are in, the old pads, but it's centralised so it's pretty, pretty much on centre there. If you look in there, the back edge of the casting is bang on for the front of this. but. I can't put this on like that. I'm going to have to move it up to about there. Can't go too far because I've got to pick this top lug up. So I've got a machine, this block of steel, then cut it away so that it touches there. So it'll be It'll be there, bolted through the block all the way, 
and the steel will come up the back here but be milled away so that I've got a tag there for the M12 bolt likewise when I get up there I don't know if I'm blocking the camera here with my head but when I get up there I've got the same thing and I've got to pick up that lug up there so the steel will taper off up there and it'll be milled away again so it'll come all the way down here bolted through from behind and then I mean it's going to be a right job putting them together but that's the plan and I think it'll work obviously that hole isn't in line with that hole as in that way so hence the reason I've ordered a piece 50 millimeter wide so that I can pick up this fully with a full bolt hole and pick up this fully I measured 40 odd millimetres okay so I'll turn that back off so that's a BMW E38 7 series Brembo 4 pot caliper aluminium as I've already said it's lighter than the standard one because that's iron um, if I fit it, like I've just shown you on here, the caliper fits perfectly onto that disc, central. These are 300mm discs and I know an upgrade for a Focus, which is what these are off, an ST170, is to go up from 300 to 324 now I do know that if you put 324 discs on this car it's the wheels won't go on the 16 and you, I believe you have to go up to 17 inch wheels to make it work I've got the genuine TVR wheels on and I don't want to change them I do believe I can get the wheel on with this caliper on without any trouble I've done a rough fit, but I can't let go of caliper. If I do, it slips down and falls off. And I can't think of any way really of tying it up in a way that I can offer the wheel on and see if the wheel will go on. But the worst, I might have to put up to a three or a five millimeter spacer on the outside, which you can't see, um, just to pack it out that little bit. But I'm hoping I won't have to but I'm not sure, it's all a bit of suck it and see. My steel should be by tomorrow and I can make a start on this. I mean, I guess my first job would be to get this, these two holes drilled, get the steel in the right place and bolt it on. And then I can start looking at where I need to mill it away on miller machine, but I will show it all. We'll set miller machine up and you can see me doing it now what I'm doing here is something that I don't think anybody's done I think everyone I've listened to and read about have said you can do it but you've got to put 12 millimeter wheel spacers on and I don't know why I have a funny feeling it's maybe the wheel spacers go behind the disc I, I don't know but that would mean new studs and a lot of messing about and if I do up front I've got to do it back sorry, yeah back can't have a wider track, can I up front, it'll look a right pig's ear so, and I don't really want wheels sticking out any further than what they do they look quite nice as they are and you start having wheel arch catching problems don't you and stuff so I'm hoping that it'll all work out the way that I'm thinking it will but I somehow doubt it for a simple reason that everybody that I've read that's done these conversions have all said you've got to put wheel spaces on so there you go I just thought I'd uh, do a little update there and we'll, uh, we'll carry on this video when the steel comes and I start actually fabricating
160. So make it 162. messing about as well it took five minutes 35 let's put a minute on let's say six six and a half minutes 30 seconds for messing about six minutes to cut a piece of bar of course oh big mother bar zoom back out this is it it's 50 millimeter by 25 millimeter solid bright mild steel bar so that's the beginning of one caliper carrier we're doing right hand side first I've cut it a little bit oversized so I can afford for milling but there's an awful lot of work on this to do I don't know whether the best thing to do first would be to blow it up I might do that, blow it all up and then come back to you. Okay, so that's the block of steel uh, blowed up, ready for marking out. If you not regular followers of my channel and you're more into cars and things you might not know about marking up steel um, this is what I use called spectracolor spectracolor blue transparent um, it's quite expensive but I, I got a good deal on that because it were leaking when they sent me it and they, they gave me half my money back so I can't remember might have been a tenner I paid or less for it but there's full bottle nearly and that's on there now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry overnight so that uh, it, it's rock hard otherwise I'll be getting it all over my fingers and it's horrible stuff uh, other thing is um, to show you is because this is going to be a bits and pieces this video of all sorts so if I point the camera there this is the left hand caliper that I'll be doing secondly this brake pipe is okay on this one but on the other one it were damaged so I've ordered a new brake pipe but you've got to form it yourself and there's a rubber sleeve on there and I don't know how on earth I'm supposed to get it on because it's, a, it's got the banjos already crimped on the ends so I don't know how I'm going to get that on I should have just bought a flaring tool and done my own. So I got these bolts. Now these, um, there's three hardnesses of tensile steel, of high tensile steel, sorry. Um, there's 8.8, uh, .8, you've got 10.9 and 12.9. Now these are 10.9. 12.9 um, are what you'd use on a crankshaft bolt, maybe holding front pulley on where you've got 250 foot pounds of pressure on it etc uh, or maybe conrod bolts or head bolts I don't know although head bolts are stretch out there but these are 10.9 and I'm sure they're M12 by 1.5 fine um, and I've just thought I'd try one in to make sure they fit come on and they do the minimum the salt were a bag of five so I bought five two for each side um, we've got 
um, a lovely old sealy uh, pillar drill there that would quite amicably do it with all different vices for it I'm sure it would work out fine however I've also got uh, a wonderful old miller machine which if you follow on my channel you'll have probably seen all the work I've done on this putting various power drives on and different motors etc but that's a Tom Senior made in Liversidge in West Yorkshire in something like 1974 I believe uh, and it's a great it's uh, it really is a great little miller machine as long as you don't push it too hard which I don't and that's what we'll be using for doing all our work for these brakes I know anybody who probably wants to copy this and do their own TVR chimer or um, Griffith or any other um, put bigger brakes on and you haven't got a miller machine then you might struggle to do what I'm going to do because I don't think you could do it with an angle grinder as such and files you could but it'll take you forever so we're going to be using that miller machine and none of you have seen it in operation before uh, you're probably in for a treat actually because it's a lovely machine and you'll see how the miller machine works right so our chunk of metal that we blowed up uh, first job I need to do is take 10 millimeter off you can see that line there look up to that point there that there is the top lug of the caliper which up that one which that top lug is going there but I can't get this steel far enough across on the carriers on the hub so I'm taking 10 millimeter off this is just the beginning so we shall take that over onto the miller machine I'll set a camera up and we'll get that set up Call it.
Yes. X. Probably drill the first two holes at 90 mil and bolt it to the uh, hub, and then we can see where we're going with it. Obviously, there's another one to make like that in a mirror image of it later, probably much later at the speed I'm working at.
for the caliper at 112 mil and as we've said these are 90 the first bolt will be up here somewhere it's above that one it'll be about maybe there and then the second bolt will be in here I'm hoping I can get my bolt in all right if not I'll have to loosen it all and mess around with it to get it in I'm sure it'll work so yeah that'll have to be rounded that'll have to be rounded it only wants to look nice when it's done anyway uh, but yeah there'll be quite a bit of this to cut away at an angle because what we've got <clears throat> I've painted this up a bit with some grey paint but what we've got here is that fixing and that fixing but all this webbing in between so I need to cut the steel away so that it leaves a pocket for that bottom hole uh, and this pocket for this top hole but we'll get there I'm sure If any of you are wondering what this is, this cutter, it's a one, two, three, four, five insert, and it's 63 millimeter diameter uh, face cutter. Call it a face mill if you want. So that's four millimetres. Four millimetres deep. And I've got to go to 12. So you can imagine it's going to take a while. Now, using that face cutter, I'm doing the whole slot in one pass. Uh, an alternative would have been to use, you know, that's a, a 10 millimetre uh, carbide four float. Uh, I could have done this by taking passes like that. I've got a, I think I might have a 12 somewhere, but that's a lot of passes. Now, with that, I'm only plunging point, uh, point 0.1 of a millimetre per cut. Whereas with that, I'd probably plunge point 0.25, a quarter of a millimetre per cut. So yeah, it could cut deeper with that. But look how many passes I'd have to make either that way or that way lots and lots of passes which is why I thought I'd give this a try um, there were a lot said that this wouldn't work because my machine were too small for it but yeah, you can see it it is working and I've got some others as well which I'll probably use because I've got two shapes to cut of this slot that I'm cutting now but then there's that one to cut out, which is where the original caliper bolted onto the casting. Uh, and that's at this end here. And it's an arc, as you can see. So I might see if I've got a smaller one that I can run and plunge. I don't know yet. We'll see. If not, I'll have to just work another way of doing it. I'll come back when I've uh, cut some more, because it's, uh, it's laborious work.
to do a reality check. No. So that should be nine millimeters. Six. As long as I'm under, that's okay. This is all being done with um, a flat disc on an angle grinder. So I've got this to cut away next. And that should be. That's the cutter that we're using. All carbide tipped. Five insert. I'm sure this is the wide axe. Wide axe, yeah. Very good cut to that. Got all these second hand. If you'd to buy that brand new, you'd be talking, I'd say, upwards three to five hundred pounds, possibly more. I didn't pay anything like that for them. So that's where it bolts onto the original hub carrier. And that's the first hole, the top hole for the 
um, Brembo. The next one will be down here, but until I bolt that up and move it around, I don't know exactly where it wants to go. Got a bit of a problem. The um, bolts I got, these I-10 style bolts, they're shouldered, and that shoulder's stopping me putting bolt through. It's uh, getting caught near top ball joint, so I'm gonna shave some off it. My sauce, that's my source of heat. Chinese diesel eater. Works a treat. Okay, we'll bob you back on there. Still a bit tight, I have to remove it all. Some of the slack in that, it's free. That's just the disc pads slurring. They're old pads. They're actually not very much worn, but they're old. And what came? So that's like it's putting some sort of twist on here when I tighten it.
Hi, it was out. Very strange. I haven't taken these pads out yet. So we're using them as a guide for my distances. And I suppose it maybe is time to take them out. Yeah, I might be able to see better what's going on then. Spiders and all sorts in here. Get out of it. Oh. See, all the things I've read about this says you've got to put a 12 milli wheel spacer on. And I didn't ever say you don't. Where can I go from? There and there. Now I'm gonna have to guess it. That's that's roughly 24.8. Oh yeah, it's different. 21. So yeah, this needs to come this way maybe one and a half millimetre and that should even it out, shouldn't it? If that's 21, nearly 21 dead. Let's say that's... Hmm, 24 and a half, 21, 24 and a half, 22. Yeah, it, it wants to come that disc wants to come this way about two millimetre. Oh, the caliper needs to go further in. But I'm really struggling with that. It's, it's tied up to hub problem. I'll come back. I'll have a think about it and come back. We'll get there. Success. So, this is don't worry about this wobbling it i've just stuck four washers at back at discs put disc back on and washers are just under two millimeter and that's what disc pads back in and there's loads of room there for fresh pads so pistons aren't even being pushed right back yeah see this moving side to side oh, that's and aside, it's because I've stuck washers at back. So I've got to either go for a two millimeter spacer or combat the other problem. But basically the caliper's on. There's one more bolt hole to drill 
which I won't do until I've addressed this problem. And then, uh, let me start putting the thing back together. Well, I can't, I've got to start renovating these then. But I wanted to show everything because a lot of lads with TVRs would probably like to do the big brake conversion, but are put off by 13, 14 hundred, two and a half grand prices from different companies. I'm sure cheap, cheapest with 13 summer. And I'm and I'm a funny feeling you've then got to go up to 17 inch wheels, and you put 12 in, uh, 12 mil spacers on. Don't know if you can get away with 16 inch. I'm lucky. This Chimera is a Mark III, and on the Mark III in 2000 2001. Um, they went to 16 inch wheels up front because there's no more 15s left and because there's no more 15s left the company I think that made them wanted so many thousand sets order for and they, want, they didn't want that many so they went to 16s all round and only difference on this is that the 205s I think on the front and two 15s I believe on the back have I got that right? I'll just check 2545 by 16 on the rear and on the front they are two two five forty five sixteen on the front. So two four fives on the back two two fives on the front. I've heard some people use only two or fives, but the same fit all right and the nice wheel, everything. Edit. My landlady texts me, would you like a cup of tea? I would love a tea, please. Yeah, so, um, I could try it wheel on. Because that could be another issue, might be my wheel catching. We get a better measurement now. Forty mil from the outside edge of that to the hub face is forty millimeter. That looks to be 50, so I think they'll fit on. I can't successfully do this, but under all these nuts, it's going to flop all over. I think I need to address one thing at a time. Get these pads sorted. So I've got a full pad in there, full area on the disc. So we're having a problem getting them deep in. I've over, overcome that now, that's sorted. I need to put this other hole in and literally fix them and then maybe try it wheel on. Right, this battery's nearly flat anyway. I might edit this up now because there's something like 28 films that I've got to edit up from this. I might get on and do that. Well, that went slowly. It were a lot more difficult than what I thought problem getting everything compact up, up to the wheel arch so that the wheel will go on which I still don't know by the way um, but I've ordered some two millimeter just two millimeters shim wheel spacers to go behind the disc I've put the little washers behind and it works uh, and in the video I did say that I was going to attempt and see if there's any way I could move the caliper further back. I can't do it. Um, I'd have to get the milling machine going and I'd have to mill all the inside of the uh, this caliper, this other side. I'd have to mill all inside that caliper away by two millimetres. And I don't really fancy that idea. There's webbing and all sorts on there. I don't, I don't want to make them weak. Uh, so I've ordered two millimetre wheel spacers. I've ordered four because I'm putting two on front 
I'll stick them on back as well. But I mean, two millimeters not going to do anything, is it? But it will re-centralize that, uh, as you've seen, uh, the caliper and gets it correct where I wanted it. So I did say that people were using 12 millimeter wheel spacers, and I'm using two two millimeters. If I put 12 millimeter on and I was turning a corner, I wouldn't be surprised if you brake hard, you'd actually get your tyre catching your wheel arch at some point, or you win even, I don't know. Thanks for watching so far guys, don't forget, give us a thumbs up, uh, and if you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe to my channel, it's only a small channel, I don't post every day, I mean this is probably a fortnight on from the last one I did, um, but it's, it's steady away. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.